Whenever Julian gets thirsty, he goes up onto the roof. The sun shines up here, and it kills the bacteria in the water. That's what his parents taught him. The water comes out of the pipes, explains Julian's mother, Cristina, but the supply is shut off for most of the day, so we collect it here in the yard, she says. The children used to get diarrhea from drinking the tap water, until Antonio Osoria came by and taught them the trick with the sunlight. Antonio works for the aid project SODIS, or Solar Water Disinfection. He explains that it's the combination of ultraviolet radiation and increased water temperature that kill the pathogens in the water. He goes around in a mobile laboratory testing the solar-treated water to check that it really is safe to drink. I take samples and put them in five petri dishes, then I put them into this incubator where no sunlight can get through so the bacteria is able to grow. The temperature is kept at a constant 36 degrees Celsius. The test takes 24 hours. In the meantime, Antonio wants to tell us about another way Mexicans solve their drinking water problem. We eat three meals a day here, and instead of drinking something like coffee, most people drink Coca-Cola with their meals, from bottles like this. So they have Coca-Cola for breakfast, lunch and dinner. That adds up to about a litre and a half a day, or even two. Compare that to this bottle of water. The brand CL is also produced by Coca-Cola. Both products cost the same, seven pesos a litre. Soft drink companies traditionally do well in Mexico. People here consume almost 500 litres of Coca-Cola and other soft drinks per person per year, more than anyone else in the world. The distribution networks of the multinational beverage companies have a long reach covering every inch of the country, including, of course, the capital. It's not surprising that Coca-Cola and other firms have taken it upon themselves to solve Mexico's drinking water problems. Fifteen years ago, there was no market for bottled water. Now, business is booming, with American soft drink giants Coca-Cola and Pepsi facing competition from European firms Nestle and Danone, all battling for their share of the market. Small bottles, large bottles, everything sells well. Half a litre costs three pesos and the large bottle is up to 28 pesos. That's two euros. How many litres are you drinking today, says this advertising slogan. Whatever the ads say, the brand name water still comes out of the tap. It's just purificada, purified. You can get the same service somewhat more cheaply right around the corner. Water purification for private clients is big business in Mexico City. First, we chlorinate the water. Then it flows through this pump and from there into this 10-level sand filter. After the sand filter comes an activated charcoal filter and then an ion exchanger for desalination. Finally, we have a fine particle filter. Sunlight is also deployed here in the battle against bacteria. The norms are tightly regulated by the state. It's because the public water supply has such a poor reputation that the water business is doing so well. Drinking tap water in Mexico is about as rare as paying the water bill, much to the annoyance of the authorities, who then can't attend to the business of repairing the national pipe network. A lot of bills haven't been paid for years. Naturally, that's going to affect the quality of service at some point. I always wonder why it is that a person is willing to pay five pesos for a half litre of bottled water when they don't seem to have the five pesos to pay for a cubic metre of tap water, which amounts to 2,000 bottles for five pesos. That doesn't make sense. The Water Authority has launched a billboard campaign using that very argument to appeal to customers to pay up. 
What's less often talked about are the payment practices of businesses. What the state exacts from them for taking its water is very unclear, say critics like Octavio Rosas Landa, economics professor at Mexico City University. He concludes that the big business of bottled water is in reality about politics. Many public utilities in this country, the things you can't do without, like water, trash collection, energy, education and health care, all these things are more or less privatized in one way or another. We wanted to talk to the market leader about water, but we were told that an interview didn't fit in with Coca-Cola's business plans right now. Meanwhile, Antonio Osorio is ready to check the results of his test. <laughs> Only five bacteria in the sample, he announces. That's a good result. The solar-treated water is safe for drinking. That's a big relief for the family. We save on cooking gas. We can now prepare meals without having to boil the water first. We all have enough to drink. We can wash the fruit and we don't have to buy any more bottled water. And so, whenever Julian is thirsty, all he has to do is climb up onto the roof. <laughs>